Hello everyone, welcome back to the Provident Conversation. This is a series of conversations where we speak with people whose life story is one where they first make life decisions before making financial decisions, something that we at Provident believes in. Today, we are very honoured to have Terence Quack, who is the CEO of Singapore Institute of Directors with us. But most importantly, he is a good friend of mine. <laughs> but first, let me introduce him. It's going to be very long, okay? <laughs> um, and normally, I will try to make the profile shorter, but I thought that, you know, the profile shows the kind of person that he is and also his conviction. So, I'm going to read everything about him. Oh my God. So, Terence spent 13 years as a regular with the Republic of Singapore Navy, RSN in short, where he received two awards to train and study in the UK. Upon completing his service, he served NS at the Navy HQ, where he got promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, NS. And also during his NS, he attended this course called GKS CSC, which stands for Go King Sui Command and Staff College, and emerged as the top graduate. I attended that course before, I'll tell you, it's not easy to be the top <laughs> graduate, but he was the top cadet, okay, top graduate of the Navy cohort that year. He also volunteered with the Navy um, as part of an international coalition to combat piracy, okay, at sea in the Gulf of Aden. And for his service, he was awarded something very hard to get as well, which is the NS Man of the Year. And after his team with ISN, Terence went on to co-found Kalen and Sage, a creative think tank focusing on strategic communications. And then subsequently, he merged that company with Emergenetics Asia in 2012, also a company that specializes in communication. Well, to be more specific, it is the company that specializes in psychometric too. Okay, now, then, about two years ago, <laughs> he exited from Emergenetics 2021 and was invited to be where he is today. And that is to be the CIO of uh, SID, or, sorry, <laughs> CEO of Singapore Institute of Directors. And he assumed mm. that role on 1st May 2022. So that's work about Terence. The next part is really about his community involvement. So apart from work, he actively contributes to the local and international community. Okay, so firstly, district councillor at both Southwest CDC and Southeast or two CDC, okay, two CDCs, where he leads the social service functional com uh, committee and is part of the employment and employability task force, respectively. And then Safra, you need anything from Safra, go and look for him. Okay. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Besides being a member of uh, Safra, he is part of the Safra Management Committee. He oversaw the development of the 64.4 million Safra Pongo Clubhouse, beautiful clubhouse. And after two terms as chair, he took on the role of chairman Safra Topayo, one of the oldest Safra in Singapore. And he also led the working group for Safra Strategic Review 2019 and is currently the chairman of the Strategic Review Implementation Committee. Uh, I'm just halfway through, by the way. <laughs> he sits on various boards, founding member of Project Happy Feet, a non-profit. Okay, which supports training and education of uh, underprivileged children across Asia. Volunteer his time uh, with his uh, uh, alma mater, uh, SMU, in the capacity of co-chair of SMU Alumni Advisory Council and member of the SMU Philanthropy Council. He's also a member of Outram Secondary School Advisory Committee. Uh, is that where you were from? No. Okay, no. Okay, wow. I don't know why you're there. <laughs> At the side, Terence still finds time to set up Podex with a group of friends. Okay, Podex, which stands for People and Organization Development Exchange, is an informal network for practitioners in the PD and OD space to support each other. Okay, and the network is founded on the principles of abundance and promotes abundance mentality. I have to say that because uh, they are really doing it for free. Okay? They're just giving to each other. There's a lot of generosity in this organization. So for his numerous contributions to the community, he was awarded, not surprisingly, Public Service Star by the President of Singapore. Okay, this is the part that to me is the most important. Okay? He is a loving brother to his sister uh, and a filial son to his father. So, I'm finally done reading your entire profile. Okay, you guys can go already. <laughs> and that ends this episode. 
Okay, no. But I really wanted to read this because mm. it talks about the various aspects of your life. Yeah. Career, community, as well as family. And we're going to ask you questions uh, in these various areas. But sure. first, RSN, why Navy? Why not uh, Army? Okay, well, first and foremost, uh, thanks very much for having me on this conversation. Um, I think a lot of things that I do in life um, really starts with knowing my purpose, if you like, right? Mm. So maybe just to answer the first question, why Navy first? Uh, you know, maybe a bit of a tongue in cheek because I got a nicer looking uniform. Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> because <laughs> army guy, army guy here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Friendly, friendly. Yeah. Um, I, I think for me, um, at that point in time when I was much younger, I was really looking for something different, right? Mm. So uh, what is it that can give me um, adventure, you know, I was a bit of an adventure junkie if you like. Mm. So I like something that's a little bit different from what everybody was looking out to do, right? So being a doctor, being a lawyer and so on and so forth. Mm. So I really wanted to pick something different and when I joined the military, I felt a really big sense of purpose. Mm. At the point in time, I never knew the word purpose but mm. there was just something in me mm. that I felt. Um, and, and one thing led to another and of course, um, when, when I joined the, the Navy, they gave me a lot of opportunities. Mm. Um, so, the, the, you know, the story just continued from there. Did you, did you like day one decided to join the Navy or you went through, you know, like what most guys will go through, right? BMT and all that. And halfway through you decided, no, I want to join the Navy. Actually, I went through BMT first. So, um, at a point in time, I realized, okay, maybe the other part of it was also, I mean, apart from looking for adventure, I was thinking, okay, what can I be doing? Mm. Um, the, the other part of it was also because I really wanted to go overseas to study. Mm. And coming from a family that I knew that they were, you know, not, not financially able to send me overseas to study, I really had to depend on my, my own uh, merit, right? Mm. Um, but unfortunately, my A-level results weren't that glorious. Really? So you got an award? Uh, not for my academic. Realize, huh? nothing academic per se. <laughs> Train and study in the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that was much later. That's actually based on my military performance, actually. Okay. But uh, at, at that point in time, I was really looking for opportunities. Mm. Um, and kind of like you ticked all the boxes. So I decided to just give it a shot. But more importantly, I really felt that there was something about being in the military. There was something about, um, you know, the sense of uh, a mission. Mm. So again, like I said, I mean, today I can articulate the sense of purpose and all that. But at that point in time, sure. it was just a feeling, uh, you know, you're part of something. Um, and I really liked that feeling. So uh, I, I decided that I'll give it a shot. Mm. So I signed on without, uh, you know, there was no promise of anything. And no scholarship. Uh, no nothing, scholarship, right? nothing. Mm. So it just, so, so they told me, said, uh, you know, I told them, I, I really want to see if I can go for, go overseas. They said, well, uh, looking at your results, you, you, you know, you have to work really hard uh, in the military. So if you perform well, chances are, because it's all based on merit, right? So mm. if you perform well, uh, chances are, uh, you know, that you could get something. Mm. So again, there was no promises, but, mm. uh, you know, I, I kind of like proved myself, I guess. Uh, and why did you leave after 13 years? So I actually signed a contract. Um, Six I, years, right, those days? Yeah, and yeah. I actually extended my contract because the bond mm. that, they, uh, that they gave me from the awards that they gave me was actually longer than my contract. Mm. So in, in that sense, I actually signed a contract. So a lot of people thought that I left the Navy, but actually I didn't quit the Navy. I completed my service. Mm. Yeah, but you didn't after 30 years you decide that you decided that okay la, it's enough la. you want yeah. you want to go to the corporate world yeah uh, I mean why I mean I mean some people will say that you know if you really love the military you should continue right I mean continue your career yeah so I, I I thought that um I really did most of the things I really wanted to do and I, I thought that the world is, uh, is is big right so mm. I would really want to see what else is out there mm. um, but I still wanted to maintain that close uh, links with the Navy because I really benefited a lot from the Navy okay uh, which is why I was very active in my national service mm. years after the regular service yeah so you continue on yeah uh, I know I asked you that question before, but tell us, uh, are you officially done? Uh, well, they gave me a watch, <laughs> which typically signifies that. But again, you know, like a, um, for, for me, I think it uh, doesn't matter whether you're wearing a uniform or you're not wearing a uniform. Uh, mm. I think at the end of the day, at some point in time, we kind of like see the higher purpose of why we're doing certain things, right? Mm. So being national service, uh, it's something that I really believe in. Mm. Uh, apart from the fact that you know I, I had really good um, bosses, I had really good comrades, uh, really good experiences. Um, but the underlying factor is still very much of there's a much bigger purpose mm. and higher calling. Um, mm. So it doesn't really matter whether you know I am officially mm. uh, given a status or not. But I I, I still maintain those links, mm. and I maintain the fact that if they need uh, you know a helping hand, I'll be back. 
So on record, how many years did you serve uh, NS or in, including your contract <sighs> service until actually to MR? Um, I I don't know. I I mean years? I start. Um, well, it's a close to thirty yeah. years, I suppose. Two thousand and no, nineteen ninety four. <laughs> started from nineteen ninety four. Mm. Nineteen ninety four. Yeah. Until today. So yeah, it's almost thirty About years. That. Yeah. yeah now that you put it this way, I mean I've never really counted. Three but decades. Yeah. Clearly so you're the maths guy, so I'll leave you to do the numbers. No, that's one simple math. Yeah. Complicated, I can't do. <laughs> yeah, but 30 years is a long time to serve national yeah. service and thank you for yeah. serving. Well, thank you for serving too. I mean, uh, you are you are a big contributor to, to national service we, too. We, we, we have the same conviction yeah. where NS is concerned. Yeah. So then after that, you left uh, RSN. Yeah. Did you work anywhere else before you went to start a firm? or you? No, I just went straight in. Yeah. Okay. Just dive right in. So yeah. you, well, like I said, you went on to start this firm, yeah. Kalen and Stage, right? Yes. Uh, focusing on communications, yeah. and uh, even subsequently, when you merged with Emergenetics yes. to form Emergenetics Asia, Asia, that's right. Right. It is also a company that focuses on helping people communicate yeah. better. What is interest in communication? So interestingly, when I was in the Navy, um, the last four, three to four years of my contract. Um, I was posted to the headquarters. Mm. So that was where I was given the opportunity to be part of a, a team of people who set up the corporate comms department. Uh, of course, we were doing a lot more than just corporate comms, but um, that was primarily the focus of uh, the work that I was doing. Mm. So I have no idea what communications was at that point in time. I had a basic degree in psychology, but it's not quite the same. Mm. Um, so I, I kind of like dive uh, head first into mm. this entire world of you know, corporate comms, crisis comms, strategic communications. But I think behind all that, I also begin to realize, I mean, being in the Navy also means that you're, you know, when, I, when I'm out at sea, uh, as they always say, you're on the same boat, right? You're on the same ship. Mm. So you realize that you have to work with different kinds of people. Mm. Um, so communication seems to be a recurring theme throughout my life, if, if you like, mm. even from way back when. Um, so I guess that's how, you know, it, 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 one thing led to another. When I completed my service with the Navy, I, I thought about, what was it that I could bring to the world? Mm. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of things that I've already honed. You know, the Navy has honed my skills in like, leadership, mm. strategic thinking, operations. Um, but I, I, I thought there was an overarching theme of communication and I thought, okay, maybe that's some place that I could start. Mm. Uh, it also helped that the people that I was with, um, when we came together and said, okay, let's start Kalen and Sage. We all had different strengths in different parts of communication. Mm. So while I like to think that my experience was very much on strategic thinking, in other words, how do you use communication strategically to help mm. uh, move forward? The, 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 the other members of the team were mm. good in design, so that's mm. visual communications. And then some people were really good in putting together very high-end kind of events. So those mm. are like your experiential communications again. Mm. So if you think about communication, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, Quite wide dimensions, spectrum, right? mm. yeah, and, and so that's how we decided to just focus on mm. communications as a team. So the funny story was when I when I did the the merger, uh, part of the plan was okay, let's just have this merger, you know, have grow the business for five years, and then you know we will all exit, right? Uh, but I was enjoying it so much, I actually overstayed. So I stayed till I think about maybe ten years. Ten years, yeah. Mm. So um, yeah, so it was it was actually a planned uh, exit. Uh, exit. Um, and it was kind of like delayed. And also, it was also further delayed by COVID. Mm. Uh, because otherwise, I would have left in the year 2020 as well. So then after that, you took a break? I did, yes. You took a pretty long break. One year? Uh, no, not quite. Uh, I, I think about six months. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember we were talking. And yes. Then you were actually enjoying yourself. Yes, uh, cycling, break, right? Cycling, yes. <laughs> doing a lot of exercises. And yeah. uh, you were also looking for things to do. La. Right. Yeah, so, so on that, right, which mm. is why it didn't feel like a very long break because I, I kind of like um, handed over the reins of Emergenetics to a really competent team of people at Emergenetics uh, in August. Um, but August 2021. August 2021. Mm. But um, I was then invited to consider the opportunity at SID in February 2022. So actually, it's only a few months. Mm. Uh, and in between, you know, I thought I would just, you know, experience what is it like to be a gig. Uh, worker, part of the gig economy, right? You mean you were working? You oh, were yeah, working. yeah. So I was oh. taking on interesting projects. So at one mm. point in time, I had like six gigs. So I was teaching at the university. I was doing a culture building project for a football club. Mm. You know, so there was a few interesting projects. I mean, things that I really enjoy uh, doing, some things I've never tried before, but mm. also familiar with. 
so I ended up doing so many different projects that I think I think that that six months was one of the busiest wow. six months. Okay. I mean, I literally worked through all the major holidays, all okay. the weekends, and so on. Yeah, yeah I mean, so besides, I didn't really feel that there was a a break apart from the fact that yes, I had a bit more time to do cycling and stuff. Yeah, but okay, so I didn't know that, but it, it seems like you were busily working. But during that break, did you do anything else that is there's nothing to do with working? Oh uh, yeah, break, of course I did. Reflection, going for a long holiday. Uh, like that. No, that's a funny thing because it was still very much COVID and the borders were only beginning oh, yeah, to open, right? right? So right. I remembered, um, I think it was October when uh, the government announced the eight VTLs. I was so excited. I quickly go get my passport thinking mm. that I will go, um, you know, mm. go on a holiday. But that never happened because I was, you know, engaged with all the different gigs. But to your point about what I was doing, I, I actually cycled around the whole of Singapore. Mm. So that was interesting. So uh, as a on your own, uh, no, with a couple so of friends. friends yeah. Okay. So so literally cycled around the whole of Singapore. Uh, I did a lot of walks. So I, uh, you know, like literally walk quite a lot of the, the trails and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, things that I could do within Singapore. Okay, so you took a break from work. Yeah. You know, uh, as you mentioned, not a very long break. <laughs> okay. And soon enough, you went back to the corporate world, right? And you yeah. joined uh, Singapore Institute of yep. Directors. I mean, what's so attractive about SID? I mean, okay. I beg your pardon, okay? Because I'm not very well informed. It sounds like a very boring organization. Yeah, yeah. It's my job to make sure that you think otherwise after this conversation. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But what lured you there? So the, the interesting thing is, although I joined SID uh, in 2022, so last year, um, I became a member of SID in 2020. Mm. So what prompted me to start my journey with SID was, if you think about it, I was in the Navy for 13 years, so military service 13 years. And then subsequently, I was in the private sector for 13, 14 years. So as an entrepreneur, regional CEO, uh, obviously company director. So I was thinking, what's next, mm-hmm. you know, in the next phase of my life, right? So military, private sector. So maybe a non-profit sp- space, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I was also very curious about being a director. So along, you know, as I was uh, uh, doing my business in uh, uh, in that 13 years, uh, I've been a company director, but I don't think I really appreciate what it means to be a company director mm, or a board director. Mm, mm. So I did my research and of course, you know, Singapore Institute of Directors came out and I mm. thought, wow, this is such a mm. preeminent organization. It's like an apex organization. There's only one, right? There's only one, yeah. right? Mm. So if I want to find out anything about directorship, then clearly I need to go to SID. SID. So that's why I signed up as a member because I thought, okay, maybe the next phase of my life, I could join a non-profit sector or maybe become a company director of somebody else's company or board director of somebody else's mm-hmm. company. So that's why I became a member. But not only that, I also signed up for an executive diploma mm. in directorship that's offered by SID and SMU. How long was the program? So it's about uh, six modules, so that spent almost a, a year. Wow, okay. So commitment, right? So, so I thought, okay, since I want to you know, do something, then I should make, make sure I'm really educated. I, I know everything there is to know mm. so that I can really bring value to organizations. So that was how my experience with SID actually started. So actually what uh, then made me decide to um, take on the opportunity to be the CEO uh, was that as I was going through the program, I discovered that it's not about being a director per se, right? Obviously it's important to know what your job is supposed to be, right? Because otherwise how can you do your job properly? But I discovered that the entire premise is actually built on good governance. Mm. So if you think about the role of the director, it's really to preserve the value of your organization and also enhance it, mm. right? Um, and that was mind-blowing for me. I mean, it's a simple concept. And if you mm. think about it, uh, mm. everything about companies mm. today, uh, mm. if there's a lack of good governance, mm. it impacts many things, everything. right? Yeah, everything. Sustainable growth, mm. right? Um, there are plenty of risks that the company can steer itself into. And at the end of the day, who really suffers, right? Mm. It's the people in the company. The people, actually, shareholders, right? employees. The shareholders, mm. the stakeholders. Mm. So while this concept of good governance is so abstract, mm. um, it touches the lives of everybody, just that we don't see it. Mm. So it's kind of like, it's only, you only think about it when, it, when something bad happens, mm. right? It's kind of like, if you're on good behavior, nobody really says anything, mm. right? But the moment something bad happens, it's like, oh, you know, there's bad behavior. Um, so that was something that really inspired me and I thought, wow, this organization is not just about getting people mm. who are directors to know what their roles and duties are supposed to be so that they can uplift their profession, mm. but it's really about championing good governance. And to me, I thought that's something that's very much aligned with everything that I was doing, right? Mm. It's all about making sure that there's a bigger purpose. Mm. Um, and I think that was what was 
attractive uh, for me that I saw mm. that the institute really stood for something for the last 24 years, mm. 25 years this year, right? Um, and I was just, you know, mind blown that I was given this opportunity to play a small part. Yeah, so I mean, uh, since you talk about community, yes. I think this is a good time to switch gear. I mean, we've been talking a lot about your career yeah. uh, so far, but I mean, community work, I mean, you are so busy. I know you are very, yeah. very busy. You travel a lot, even when you were with, uh, yeah. you were with Imaginetics, yeah. you were traveling a lot. Yeah. Uh, but you are involved in so many community work. So many. I mean, I've, that's the reason why I read the whole entire okay. thing, right? Safra, all the CDCs, yeah. you know, and then you have uh, Project Happy Feet. Yeah. And even Podex, I look at it like yeah. community yeah. because you get nothing out from yeah. uh, Podex. Yeah. You just wanted to give. I mean, what is the motivation? I mean, where do you get all the energy from? Uh, you know, it's it's a. I, I really don't know how to answer this question, right? Like, where do I get the energy from? I guess I guess uh, I am inspired by the bigger picture, right? So that's how I always think, right? So if I want to do something, then what what is the bigger picture mm. behind this? Is what, what? How does this connect to the you know, the, the biggest picture there is. So what is the biggest cause, right? Mm. So if you think about everything that I'm doing, it's either serving the community, which means that I know that, you know, behind these organizations, they are trying to do something, right? Mm. And this something connects to the bigger picture, whether it's economic empowerment, or it's about education, or it's about uplifting lives, or it's about providing assistance, or it's about making connections so that people can move up to the next layer, right? So I think um, I, I need to see the purpose behind this organization. I need to believe in that. And the moment I believe in that, then I ask myself, is there something within me, uh, within my experiences that I can bring to the table? And it doesn't have to be very big, right? It could be maybe just making a couple of phone calls, for example. Mm -hmm. And then one thing leads to another, you know, and then opportunities come. And then to me, it's like I, I keep asking myself, can I bring more value? Mm -hmm. And if I can, then why not? So, so I'm just going to interrupt you and say, you know, you, when we first started the conversation, you talk about purpose. Yes. Right? Of, I mean, of course, when we were young, we don't know such a word, like purpose, yes. right? Yeah. We don't think a lot about yeah. it. Yeah, but now that you have uh, been out there for a few decades yeah. and you have been talking a lot about your career, community work yeah. and all that, are you able to articulate your purpose? Yes. Okay. Interesting that you ask this question. So, um, like you mentioned, right? So, I think when a, a pretty young age, I think I was always asking myself, why am I born, right? Mm. Why am I here? What's my purpose? Why do I exist? I mean, I didn't really use the purpose, but it's really, why do I exist, right? Mm. So, it was very frustrating because I have no answer and no one can tell you, right? Um, so, I can't remember where I got the, the idea that I should come up with a purpose because, you know, I, you know, I, I think there was a period of time in my 20s where this concept of purpose started coming up, right? So, I thought, wow, you know, there are people who talk about something called the purpose, so they know why they're here, you know. And I felt a bit FOMO, right? It's kind of like, how come other people have a purpose I don't have? I don't know what my purpose was. So I, I decided, okay, it doesn't matter. Why don't I just write a statement? Okay. Okay, and just say that's my purpose, okay. okay? And then do my best to live according to that purpose statement. Okay. And if it, it's not really my purpose, I will know, right? Mm. Yeah? So I said, okay, let's just write it down. So I wrote, to make a positive impact. Mm. So vague, you know, like such a big word. Mm. Okay, it doesn't matter. So I just... Try it, right? So uh, I then started making decisions based on that purpose statement. So mm -hmm. in other words, if you ask me, Terence, would you want to do this? I would say, okay, how does it translate to my purpose of making a positive impact? Can I visualize the positive impact? Mm. If I cannot visualize the positive impact, then I'll say no. Okay. So it became a very simple way to make decisions, right? So it's no longer mm. about, is this about you know, money? And then it doesn't matter. But mm. at the end of the day, uh, to me, it's about the purpose, right? So, and my purpose is to make a positive impact. And then, I realized, wow, even though it's such a big and vague, you know, it's, you know, everybody can say to make a positive impact, but to me, it became almost like a moral compass, right? Mm. It became a simple way for me to make decisions. Mm. Um, and I can have, you know, the nastiest of conversations with individuals. And at the end of the day, if, you know, during the conversation, I, if I know that my intent is to make a positive impact, somehow I will make sure that the conversation ends on the note yeah, okay. where the individual feels there's a positive impact. Wow. So, it translates to almost everything that I do. So everything that I've done, the kind of business decisions that I make, the kind of deals that I go into, the kind of communities that I volunteer for, as long as I can see the positive impact at the end of 
that work, mm. it makes it easy for me to say yes or no to. So until today, that is still a purpose statement Absolutely. and uh, you didn't like change it. Yeah. So even it. like, I, I didn't have to write many CVs in my life right? because I was in the Navy, so I don't have to write CV. Yeah. And then when I completed my service and I started my company, I don't have to write CV to myself. So I never really written a CV. So it was only in 2021 when that friend of mine who said, can you give me a CV? I literally had to Google, right? Mm. Uh, to write a CV. So when I wrote that CV, I literally put at the top my purpose statement as well. To make a positive mm. impact. And that to me is something that I feel uh, mm. it's it's a I wouldn't say makes it a shortcut to make decision, but it really helps. Mm. Right? It really helps me make a lot of decisions in my life. Have you ever been in a, uh, a stage in your life whereby even though you know that by doing this is in alignment with your purpose, but yet money is an issue? Like, okay, if I do this. Yeah, it's quite aligned to my purpose, but I'm not going to be very well compensated for it. I won't be paid well for it. I won't be paid at all for it. Um, I, I, I can't say I, I have that kind of a situation. I think, um, I, okay, apart from the purpose part, the other part of me is also, you know, I, I like to be creative, right? So I like to think, okay, if, if this is really something that I want, then there must be a way to, to, to go around it. Mm. So for example, if I feel that this, the purpose is important, but I also want to make money, for mm. example, right? Mm. Then I will ask myself, how do I okay. find something okay. to achieve both, right? Okay. Because it's not just about making money, right? There mm. could be many things that I need to check the box off mm. as well, right? Mm. So money is just maybe one part of it. Mm. But at the end of the day, I, I also believe that, uh, you know, there must be a way to get it done. And if mm. I don't know the way, Somebody like Chris may know the way. So I would say, Chris, can you, you know, I'd like to pick your brains and say, okay, is there, is there some, some ways that I can do to do this? So, so I guess um, the answer is at the baseline, it's still about the purpose, mm. but it, it's not just purely about purpose. There, there must be other things that I may also want to meet. Sure. Uh, so again, it's that clarity, right? So why am I doing mm. certain things? Uh, what am I giving up? Mm. What's the trade-off? What are the consequences of this particular action or inaction, for example? Mm. So that that is some some things that I, I you know yeah, I, it's I always purpose driven. It's still back to yeah. purpose, right? And you won't if somebody come to you and say that well you know uh, I'll pay you this much or you are going to be compensated this much, but you find that you cannot make an impact or you totally you don't believe in the purpose, yeah. you probably will say no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now uh, there is this uh, book that I've read. Yeah. I'm not sure whether you've read it before. Uh, and this book. Uh, it's called Repacking Your Bags. The authors, Richard Leder and David Shapiro, they define the good life as living at the place where you belong, with the people you love, doing the right work on purpose. And when I first read it, I oh, thought wow, it's a purpose, very, okay. good, very good working definition to start yeah. with. Right? Not everybody agrees with this yeah. statement, but it's a good uh, working definition to start with. What do you think? And based on that, Definition. Do you think you are living a good life right now? I, I would say that I'm living a very blessed life, lah, right? So um, um, I, I, I think I'm lucky compared to a lot of you know, people out there. I mean, so many things is happening around the world today, so don't even begin comparing, right? Mm. So um, I, I guess I don't really pause to think whether I'm living a good life or not because at the end of the day, if I want something mm. bad enough, then of course I'll go find a way to try to get it and as long as it meets my purpose, right? Uh, making a positive impact, then uh, it, it's, it's okay. So, so I, I guess I feel I always need to move forward. Mm. Um, and as I, as I grow older, you know, or as I, as I grow, uh, what I want in life may change for sure. I mean, I can't be wanting the same thing that I wanted but, you know, when I was 20 years old, right? Um, which is why I think it's important that uh, I count my blessings, that I continue to see what is the impact that I can bring, the positive impact that I can bring, the, the kind of value that I can bring at any point in time, um, and, and not really worry so much about defining whether it's a good life. I mean, at the end of the day, so what if I say that I'm living a good life? I mean, mm. okay, no one is going to give me a, a star, mm. <laughs> uh, you know? Mm. Um, but I think it's more important to make sure that mm. I, I continue to stay relevant and add value. If you think back about your life the past few decades I know you said that you make a decision you move on yes um, but if you do happen to reflect are there any regrets at all in your life 
Are there any regrets? Uh? I, I'm quite sure there are if I think deep enough, right? Um, but it's, it's, I mean, I, I could say that, you know, like I could study harder, get better results maybe. I mean, for every, every stage of my life, there's probably some things that I could have done differently. I could have done better, you know, some words maybe I shouldn't have used in certain conversations. So I think in every, every moment in every day, there could be okay. um, things I could have done differently. Sure. So, and then fast forward to today, I, looking back, I could say, oh, I could have done differently because maybe it has taken off a different trajectory. Maybe mm. it would have um, made a difference to, you know, where I am today. It could have made a difference to somebody else's life, for mm. example. Um, but I, I still maintain to, to the point that, you know, at the end of the day, I've, I, I like to think that I, at, a, at every moment, I am intentional, right? Uh, and if I'm not intentional, then probably I, mm. you know, it's, it's something that I, I, it's not in my awareness, right? Mm. Um, but anything that I'm aware of, I made intentional decisions. Um, could it be different? Yes, for sure, right? Um, but I'm coming more from what can I learn from those, uh, those situations so that I can be a better person, I could do things differently. Um, so, so if you ask me regrets, I, I would think there, there are probably a lot of small things. Okay, no major ones. No major ones. Mm. Um, but if you are talking about major ones, then it could be, for example, you know, do I really need to buy a car <laughs> at some point in time, right? Uh, because when I was much younger, of course, you know, I wanted to, wow, you know, feel good, mm. I, you know, a bit of spending money, okay, mm. maybe buy a car. So looking back, okay, like, do I really need a car? Mm. So I guess that there, there are decisions that the 40 over year old me would mm. question, the mm. 20 over year old person, but uh, I also want to be a bit forgiving to myself to say, okay, mm. at that point in time, you know, that's the context, that's the maturity that I am at. Um, and I like to think that at that point in time, maybe I made the best decision mm. given whatever choices. Of course, in hindsight, I could have done a lot mm. differently. So if I go from that point of view, then my entire life could be a life of regret, right? Mm. Because everything could be done differently. Um, but I choose not to look at it from that point of view. But it's more, of, okay, interesting that at that point in time, maybe I made this decision, but what could I have learned uh, from it? And if it helps somebody else, maybe I could mm. share. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question which yeah. I didn't prep you. And sure. it could be sensitive. And please tell me if you don't want to answer. It's okay. fine. Sure. Right? Um, and uh, I know you are very close to your father. I mean, at least I've seen yes. a lot of on your Facebook. Yeah. You spend a lot of time. Very heartwarming uh, pictures. Um, do you feel that it's also a result of... Because I know your mom passed away. Yes. Uh, not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, was there a realisation that... Wow, our parents are getting older. I could have spent more time, you know. But now I have my father. I really want to seize the time and spend more time with him. Actually, the realization uh, to spend more time with my parents actually came very much earlier on. So, um, and of course, it was a bit of a wake-up call when I found out that my mom had cancer. So she she fought the the fight for about three years, right? Um, and and that also made me realize that I should start paying more attention, right? But, but of course, I was you know, excited about so many things in my life, you know, there's so many things that's, that I'm enjoying. So it's kind of like, okay, how do I then prioritize a little bit? But it doesn't mean that I have to drop everything. Yeah. Because we life can't. goes on, yeah, right? We, we can't, can't right? Yeah. Um, but then it's about being intentional. So to me, it's not about the amount of time that you spend with somebody, but it's more of what are you um, making that person feel each time you are with or without that person. Mm. So I think the quality is more important than the quantity. But of course, the quantity is important as well, right? Mm. I mean, one of the things that has um, been on my mind, you know, uh, uh, it's every time I, I wake up, I'll look at my dad and I'll say, okay. Who wakes up earlier? Yeah, uh, he does. He does. Yeah. I mean, that is uh, it's amazing. Like, he'll, just make, he'll make sure that he'll wake up and then he'll just, you know, we'll have breakfast together. So every day we have oh, breakfast together. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, so I mean, there, there are times where I just look at him and there are times where I would get frustrated, right? Of course, like, because that's that. Right? Yeah, we all do, right? So, but I'll just think, okay, wow, um, better cherish this moment now because you never know, right? Mm. Could mm. be, you know? Mm. Yeah. Your dad has a very contagious smile. <laughs> that's all I can say. So, yeah. I mean, thanks for answering that question. No? I've just got one last question. Sure. As you know, at Provident, yeah. I mean, we serve our families of clients by helping them first make life decisions. Yeah before making financial decisions to yeah. enable those life decisions. I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. And we spend a lot of time, you know, trying to understand. I mean, uh, unlike many people, you already, you're quite clear of your purpose. Right? But a lot of people, they may not be so clear. 
and we are trying to help clients understand that life purpose and then translate it into life goals so that they can achieve those life yeah. purpose. And then we arrange their financial decisions so that we can enable sure. those goals, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and, and well, it's obvious that after uh, speaking to you, uh, it's obvious that you represent that belief. Um, so can you share something that will encourage and inspire others to do the same? If you are speaking to someone right now mm. and you see someone running around just trying to make money, you know, uh, you know getting a promotion, nothing wrong, yeah. right? Uh, and you want to encourage someone, think about your life purpose and try and align that with your life purpose. What would you say to this someone to encourage? Well, I think rather than to just give an advice to say, oh, you know, because then that makes it sound as though I know it all and then, you know, so, Very telling. Yeah, it's too telling, right? And also, I don't want to be judgmental because, I mean, I will never really understand that person's life situations, sure. right? Well, you can only see the actions and, okay, then we can make, you know, certain conclusions, but we will never know. Apart from my life purpose, I got a few personal maxims, right? So, I, again, I can't remember when it was that I stumbled upon these four words, mm. but I thought, wow, so much wisdom captured in just four words. Mm. Um, and, and these four words is, this too shall pass. Right? Mm. So, Sounds like investment forwards. <laughs> this too shall pass. This too shall pass, crisis. right? So why, why I was particularly um, struck by these four words? Well, because, uh, of course, you know, when I, when I came across these four words, there was an interesting story behind it. Of course, I don't even know whether this is the right story. So once upon a time, there's a king, right? He uh, asked the, 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 the court to give him mm. something to remind him that when he wins all the battles, not to be overly arrogant, mm. right? And at the same time, that same thing needs to remind him that when he is losing all the battles, that is not to wallow in despair. Mm. So, long story short, they gave him a ring, and on the ring, he inscribed these four words, right? Mm. So, to me, that story is quite uh, spectacular because the four words actually serve two purposes, mm. right? One is when I am enjoying my successes, mm. my achievements. Okay, it's a nice reminder that, okay, you know, maybe this. 30 seconds of excitement, it's going to go this over. This too shall pass. This too shall pass, right? Okay, you know, reality is going to hit pretty soon, okay. And, and if I do go through difficult times, mm. um, and we all go through difficult times, then this same four words is, okay, okay, just hang in there because these two, two shall pass. Shall pass. Mm. So going back to your question about inspiring people, I think that this is something that may not necessarily be inspiring uh, from that point of view, but I think it may be something that hopefully provokes deeper thoughts, right? Uh, why am I so busy? Why am I choosing this path? Why am I making this decision? Um, is it because I think that life will be like this all the time? Meaning, you know, good old days is going to last or the bad days are still going to last. So, so is it, is it going to last all this time? So hopefully this allows um, greater introspection for, mm. for reflection and to think, mm. you know, and then using that, probably, hopefully, lead to... So, what exactly am I doing this for? Mm. Thanks, Terence, for sharing so much with us. Um, I mean, we have definitely taken a lot uh, of uh, good points from you. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as uh, we did. And all the best to you, SID. Yes. So, remember to sign up for member. I will. <laughs> I promise Thank you, you, I will. <laughs> so, I hope you have enjoyed watching uh, this conversation as much as I've enjoyed uh, interviewing Terence. I've taken a few... Uh, tips or learn a few things from Terence. Uh, the first thing is about making that purpose statement, writing it down. I mean, don't think too much about it. Yeah. Just write it down. And interestingly for him, he wrote it down and then it became his life purpose statement even after, what, two decades? Two decades. So if you have always been thinking about, you know, why do I exist for? What is my purpose statement? Well, just write down. You can always change it if you're not happy with it. <laughs> You'd be surprised how much this can do for you. And the other thing that I've taken away from him, which is really the last part that he said, and that is this four words, these two shall pass. We, we, we use it a lot when we, when we coach clients in investing, right? And no matter how difficult it is, these two shall pass. But I didn't see it from the other perspective, which is, well, even when you are enjoying yourself yeah. with someone, with someone you love, mm. this moment shall pass. So treasure it while yeah. you have it. So... Thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, you will continue to watch uh, the Provident Conversation and we hope that we will continue to inspire you.